there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK and this is the lighter side of Black Bright. For those of you who look at my videos, it's like chalk and cheese, Love Island, and then you look at another video and it's talking about immigration or it's talking about deportation or it's talking about other um, more serious topics. Anyway, Love Island is where I relax. And I have fun with what I watch. And I look at the dynamics of relationships. And I analyse the dynamics. And I try to work out what's working from what isn't. And that's what I do. Anyway, tonight, what happened tonight? Well, Priscilla and Mike were saved. I think it was the baby challenge. I think that people saw how close they got. And that is what kind of made it cemented it so i'm glad they're safe and now mike has a girlfriend priscilla is now his girlfriend he can see her out there on the outside he can see them together on the outside so that's great news so yeah it's onwards and upwards for mike and priscilla and he's now stabilized himself i'm not quite sure whether this um boyfriend girlfriend is a bit too gimmicky though how important is it for someone to actually say the words, you are my girlfriend? Because I think Jess, she thought she could, I'm not going to say manipulate because that's too strong a word. But when she was talking about, oh, she wants to talk about whether or not they were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend and whether or not they're going to be exclusive, um, I think it was her way of trying to get into the gang of boyfriend and girlfriend, but it kind of takes away what is somewhat considered serious um, in with regard to the islanders. With me, I've never been in a relationship and thought it had to be declared that my partner was my boyfriend or my partner was my girlfriend. Because sometimes you just kind of know. But I guess in one sense it does bring clarity, doesn't it? I guess you never quite know where a relationship is going unless you make that declaration. It's like when people say, you know, I'd like us to get engaged. At that point, you know, whoa, this guy's serious. So it's all a part of the same thing. So I guess in that kind of culture, whatever that culture is, that's their way of showing they're serious and they're taking it to the next level. They're going to be monogamous. Although Ched feels he can be monogamous without saying that she's exactly his girlfriend. So I thought that was good because otherwise it's like following sheep, isn't it? It's like, oh, everybody's doing it just because. And that's not the point of it. So, yeah, that was pretty good. Did you see Mike's face with the lions? He was pooing himself. <laughs> They weren't even coming nowhere near and he's like, oh, scared as anything about they growled. I mean, please, do you think they're going to take you through there if the, if the lions are going to jump on you? Anyway, that was, did you notice? They were the only couple. Well, we haven't seen Sean and Shanice and Luke T's date yet. I reckon that's going to be a good one. But so far, Mike and Priscilla are the only two that haven't had to work. So Finn had to row the boat, Shed had to cook, albeit that little barbecue, but they still had to work. And so now we've got Luke T left, and who else have we got left? God, oh yeah, Demi and Luke M. So we'll have to see what dates they have tomorrow. And it's close, it's getting to, you know, the final five now. So I guess they're not going to bring anybody else in at this stage. So I think this is it. I think they're going to get rid of one more couple. I think it's more likely to be, with my little predictions, Jess and Ched. For some reason, I just think they're going to be the next one to go. And yeah, and I think it's all going well. They're all heading on the home front. Um... What I thought was interesting is the way we have seen relationships evolve, especially interracial relationships. I've never actually seen it in progress. 
you know, I've been looking and saying, oh, Luke T and Shanice, and they've really got this connection. And it's never really dawned on me. That's an interracial relationship. The funny thing is, is that when I look at Ched and Jess, it's an, to me, it's obvious that it's an interracial relationship. Isn't that weird? And so I was kind of putting them both together and kind of thinking, how does it evolve? What makes the two of them so different? I think with Luti and Shanice, why I didn't actually see it as an interracial relationship is that the two the two of them connected on such a weird, magical level. It was almost like they were vibing off each other. And like I said, I'm sure those two are twin flames. Whereas with Ched and Jess, it looks more like a struggle. They, they look, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think the opposites are so obvious with Ched and Jess. Whereas with Shanice and Luke T, it's not so obvious. It's almost like they blend into each other in a weird kind of way. But it's quite fascinating to actually watch it in progress. And I've never kind of, I mean, we've had interracial relationships on Long Island, I will say Long Island, on Love Island for a while. But it's only in this series, series I've kind of looked at it to see how does it work? What does attract them? And if you notice with Shanice, it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with colour because she liked Connor and she liked, forget who she liked in the beginning, but it doesn't really matter. Race doesn't come into it. It was the connection she had with Luke, at Luke T that drew her towards him. And those two just clicked straight away. And, he, you know, from he talked about Disney. That was it. It was just like the two of them were just on it. Um, I think with Ched and Jess, I think it looks too much like a struggle for some reason. Even though they get on, even though he's endearing, even though she seems to like him, I don't sense the chemistry. I don't, I'm still not feeling it with those two. Still not feeling it. I'm still kind of, um, I think Ched has got some kind of feelings, but I think Ched is quite wary for some reason. And I think Jess is quite wary. And maybe that's what I'm picking up, that the two of them are quite um, slow burners in their own way. Um, what else was I going to say? Did you see how uncanny it was when Mike and Priscilla left the villa to go on their date on the safari? Did you notice they both jumped in the same angle with their feet on the side at the same time? How uncanny is that? Maybe they're twin flames. Because twin flames are quite a magical. They kind of do things at the same time without realising it. They're, quite, they're connected on a very ephemeral um, plane. And so what you find is that they automatically connect. I don't think we see the connection with Mike and Priscilla as much. It's only when I saw them, the, the two of them jump simultaneously I thought, whoa, that is synchronicity. And that is a sign of a twin flame engagement. So maybe, just because they're not showing us it all, maybe those two are connected. The same way as Luke, T and Shanice are connected. I think Paige and Finn they're, they have a very, very strong attraction to each other, but they're not twin flames. Nor is Ched and Jess. Nor is Demi and Luke M. That's just my opinion. I'm always giving my opinion. Remember, when I'm talking on these videos, it's just my opinion. I don't want anybody running off and... I mean, okay, it doesn't really matter with Love Island, but in some of my other, um, some of my other videos, I'm not quite sure if any of my... Uh, any of the my subscribers that watch my other videos 
watch this one because this is so totally removed from it. But it is always my opinion. So don't run off with it and think, oh, yeah, what, what Black Bright is saying is absolutely categorically true. Always do your own research. OK, anyway, off the subject. Love Island. That is what I'm here for tonight. Um, what else? Um, let me see. So Mike has proposed. Well, not proposed, but now he has a girlfriend. And he did it in a kind of a calm and unassuming manner, which was nice. It did, he, there was none of the pomps and circumstance that, that I would have thought he might have done to create attention to himself, because he does seem to be a bit of an attention seeker. So the way he asked her to be his girlfriend out in the middle of nowhere, no audience, just him and her, to me, that spoke volumes with Mike. So, yeah, that's a good one. That is good on him. So, and 20-year-old Finn is talking about getting a place now he's met Paige. 20 years old. He's quite ambitious, isn't he? Thinking about getting a place just so he can be with Paige. But it must be difficult, you know. You're with somebody 24-7. And, you know, you're that intimate together. Non-stop for the whole, I think it runs for, is it six weeks or 12 weeks? I don't even know. I love the program. Don't ask me about the semantics or the details. Anyway, forever how long? It must be really difficult to leave the villa and then separate. You go home, that person goes home, and then you're either on FaceTime or telephone. That is, that must be a real test, mustn't it? And then you're going to be wanting to see each other even more because now you're out of the villa, you want to, you know, take it up a notch, don't you? And that's why it's important that, you know, you have to be practical in the villa. No point taking or attaching yourself to someone who lives miles and miles and miles away. And you're thinking, oh, my God, it'd be OK in the first few months because you're thinking the passion, honeymoon period. But after a while, it will get tedious. So. So I thought it was a mature decision for someone so young. And Paige is relived her hope in men, bless her. I think she's been hurt a lot in the past. So I think it's really important. And, you know, some of those... Um, both the women and the men, it, they go through a healing process in that in the villa. People just think it's, you know, couples messing around and talking crap, but it's not. It's about growing. It's about evolving. It's about healing. It's about taking responsibility for yourself, for your behaviour. There's a lot of dynamics going on in the villa. And it's about, you know, being in, you can't run away. You can't say, oh, I'm going to watch TV. You can't go, oh, I'm going to read a book. Because you're forced to confront your issues in there. So that's what happens. People are forced to confront their issues. They're forced to deal with their issues. They're forced to forgive, even though it might take a little bit longer. And if they don't think they can forgive, they don't. if they can't hack it, they leave, like what Leanne did. I mean, she reckons she got the ick. I don't think she tried very hard. But, you know, you know when you um, are not feeling it. So it's a very good place to kind of find out where your emotions are, find out what you're feeling. But it is an unrealistic situation. Because it's like getting married for, you know, when they, if you've seen that program, married on the, at first sight. And these two people, they get married. They've never seen each other. And they've just decided that whoever, there is this kind of a matching, um, a matching program. And so the producers match them as much as possible. And then they set a date and they decide to meet and get married. Can you imagine? I guess it's a bit like an arranged marriage, actually. But yeah, they've got that. And they've also, someone told me they're coming out with another program, which is similar. You date somebody that you only write to, I think. I don't think you speak to them. You just write to each other. 
and based on how you write to each other you arrange to meet up and have a date or whatever you do so it's quite fascinating how relationships are formed you know a lot sometimes we're led to believe that it's a long process we're led to believe that you have to get to know each other take your time get to know this and get to know that some people are married for years and they still don't know their spouse some people are married for years and it's still mash up and yet some people they see each other boof instant attraction and it lasts for a lifetime so i think it's quite a good i think it's 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 quite a clever way of testing who you are testing your boundaries and all of that i think it's quite a good idea actually actually i think it's a fantastic idea i i think they should do an older love island you know but somebody mentioned that i don't know who but that would be interesting i mean they wouldn't be out there in their bikinis that's for certain but i hope not <laughs> unless they've got some phenomenal bodies but hey you know that would be interesting to see the different dynamics how they um because they're going to be more set in their ways aren't they so as an older couple maybe like in their um 50s no maybe mid 40s to um early 60s maybe and then you have men in the same age groups to see who gravitates to who i think that would be quite interesting i guess the young people wouldn't really watch it i know a lot of old people would <laughs> anyway what else have i got here um yeah i don't think i've got anything else really yeah oh yeah i was gonna say um as i normally do you know at bedtime um those who get frisky luke m and demi jess chess and ched and shanice and luke t they're the only ones that um get frisky aren't they you know whether it's just kissing or whether it's well that's what they're normally doing and then the other ones, they just literally roll over and go to bed. It's just like the romance, it's like the honeymoon is over already. That's a bit bizarre. Mike, Mike does that with Priscilla. And so does um, Demi and Luke T. But I mean, Shanice and Luke M. I mean, Luke T. Shanice and Luke T. Every single night. Well, we don't see every single night, but when they show us every night and they're just looking at each other's eyes and they're just, you know, the way Shanice cups his face and, ah, oh, I just like, it's just so tender and sincere. And you look at those two and you just say, that is how love is supposed to be. I think they should win it. I said it a few weeks ago and I'm saying it again. Shanice and Luke T should win. They are the genuine article. Um, Callum's happy with his Molly now. He's been booted out. And, you know, I was just thinking, you know, when they booted out Callum and Molly, that is to tell you that the people in the villa see what we don't see. So obviously there is some kind of dynamic that they don't think is working and will not work on the outside. Why they booted out Callum and Molly and kept Priscilla and Mike. Anyway, that's all I've really got to say really. I mean, it's wonderful to see all the different couples and it's wonderful to see how the relationships develop and evolve and, you know, they're getting stronger and stronger by the minute. And yeah, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe will they get a text and say, we'll get by the fireplace. And then they'll probably say, well, they might leave us, but they'll probably leave us to choose the last couple to leave the villa. And that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.